All right, y'all. So, uh, a long ago in one of my just random, like, cutting keys videos or something, I talked about my key checker. And I've had a few questions about that ever since that video came out. And people were, some of the people were wanting to know exactly how I set it up. Well, my key checker that I did in that video actually has lasted about a year and a half. This is basically a quick set deadbolt cylinder. And we can see that we are jammed up there. I don't know what's going on. However, it uh, apparently is time for a new key checker. So we are gonna go through and find a cylinder that is in really good condition still that you can get this off, you know, if you switch out hardware on a house uh, for maybe finish issues and you have, you know, a quick set cylinder that's in really good condition and I'm going to show you a couple examples that are the ones that are not to use but we're going to take this one apart but I'm going to show you real quick some of the other ones that I have and we're going to make one real quick so that uh, it'll have its own video so here we go I pulled out my box of cylinders when I do scrap I throw the good cylinders in here so these eventually will all be gone in a giveaway or multiple giveaways. And it looks like I got a few quick set cylinders. Now you do want to use actual quick set cylinders. You don't want to use a Defiant, even though Defiant and, well, what is this? Gatehouse use a KW1 keyway. You want to stick with master or okay, master. <laughs> you want to stick with quick set original. Now, obviously, even though the this is not worn, you can see how bad the face is worn on that. And that's just from repeated putting the key in and out. Obviously, it's jammed up as well. And we'll look at this one. That one's got a pretty good bit of wear. You, you know, you could use these if this is all you had. This is acceptable. But I try to find a actual really, really good condition. Because, again, frequently people want to change out maybe the finished color so i'm going to keep digging over here if we zoom in down here i've got some more quick set um, these are the old quick set cylinders and again i could use these because they are original quick set but i'm going to keep looking through here to see you know i've got plenty of you know lsda cylinders and all that but you won't uh oh there's a good one you want something that looks like that. See how the face is nice and pretty pristine. We'll go ahead over here and take it apart and uh, see how the inside looks because that also is important. Now, a quick set is the only or one of the only one step progression master key talking about. Uh, I don't have a key for this, so I'm going to shim it real quick, but. Since it's one step progression, you can pull this little trick off to check keys. And once you key it up, you can check any cut quick set key, except for ones with a seven cut. Seven technically is a master for a master system. And we only use this one for checking you know keys that come in so so the deal is is when people come in to get keys made we don't guarantee certain ones like walmart especially if we can look at the key and the shoulders all cut to heck and back we will definitely not guarantee those so we tell that to people and we also have this key checker it had master pins in there but oh shoot okay so that's rounded off that is not going to work for us all right but i did have that other one let me go grab it all right so somebody came along and did that probably to make it work with a master key so we're going to check the inside of this one it's not quite as pristine it does have a little dent there but if the core has five unground uh, chambers in it then we will use it instead Let's see if I can shim that one yeah this one's shimming much easier all right let's check this one oh, oh. 
A little bit there. That's good. So that's what you want to see, not that. Because that third ground out hole uh, is going to kind of trip you up and it'll give you a false reading for any three miscut. But this one is not, and it seems to be pretty good. So then what we do, we'll go ahead and make sure the upper chamber, since I dumped that one out, I'm going to just check the upper pins here. Uh, we are missing an upper pin. It may have happened when I was shimming it. So let me, I'm going to use some of these originals. I got to go grab a pair of tweezers. All right, I seem to be having a tweezer crisis. So I had to go get one out of my truck. But I am uh, going to come in here and make sure there are no master pins. Make sure all of our Top pins and springs are good because you do not want it to, you don't want any outlying factors to mess up your key checker cylinder thing. That's good, and that's good. All right, so now all you do is load it. This is, this is what everybody has asked me about. It's pretty easy. So what we're going to do is load it with all bottom pins, 171, and then we're going to load it with five master pins, which will give us every combination, one through six. So if I was going to use my .03 kit to do this, I would use the 171 and then the 24 wafers. However, if you have a quick set original kit, that's even better, sort of. No, it's not. Let's do this. You can use an original quick set kit. However, I would advise, I, I kind of thought better of that while I was talking, because the quick set original pins are rounded on the top and bottom, that of course gives us, see, rounded on the top and bottom, that gives us a lot more slop in the key, in the, in the, in the, uh, the cut of the key. So with those rounded pins, I'm trying to check accuracy, so I really do want to use an O3 kit because that's the most accurate. So I'm just going to go ahead and my view up here. Yeah, my view. I'm going to go ahead and load it up. We got one, 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 one. Oh, I dropped one. One, one, one. Get in there. One and one, and then we're going to go use all of our 24 wafers. So I'm going to grab a little handful there, and we're going to go first chamber one. Oh, did I put one in there? Shoot, let's check it before I go any further. You kind of got to be careful with putting it in there. Let's zoom this down for the lighting portion. So I got one in there. So that'll cover one and two cuts. Oh my God. And there's two, so it'll cover one, two, and three. Three, four, and five. So that will be the one cut, and then five master pins would come out to be six. You could load one in there if you use a lot of seven, seven cut keys, or if you cut a lot of sevens. You could always load one more because, so that's two, three, four, five, one, we need some more, two, three, four, Five. So they're all going to be about the same height. I just dropped a pin and it fell in one of the other holes. It fell in this last one. So we'll go ahead and fill that fourth one up, which is one, two, three, four, ah, and five. And we already got one in there, so that's two, 
three, four, five. And again, you can toss one more in there. That's going to bring it up straight up to the height. May not be a good idea. I've never actually tried it because there is a limit of to how much room is in the top here. So anyway, you can see once you're done that they will all be level. And if we put a blank key in there very carefully, we will, I'm going to very carefully this. Woo. See all of our master wafers very carefully. So that will cover all of our keys that we cut. So the deal is, is when somebody brings in like a hardware store key or a Walmart key and you can look at it and tell, you know, you can look at a key and tell like this one, for instance, is an original. It's not an original quick set. However, it is a quick set cut. We can try it and it works. Um, here's another, is this the same bedding? That's two five. This is 21563, this is 25311. So we grab this one and it works. Uh, quick set, quick set. Here is a Defiant, that is 21141. That is off a little bit, look at that. So the Defiant keys have a little bit of difference on them there. This is an off-brand quick set. You can tell because it does not say quick set and it does have bidding on it, but it looks like a quick set. So let's see how their bidding is. Look at that. That's what you gotta be careful of. You know, try to decode it. That is not, totally not functioning there. But if we find a quick set key, if Jason had a original quick set key sitting around here, we, uh, well, here's another Defiant. That one works good. So that is, Kind of one of the warnings about it. Another warning while I'm talking about quick set keying, don't ever, if you're master keying something, don't ever use quick set original pins and uh, lab pins mixed together. Like if you have quick set original bottom pins in there and you try to use a 03 kit top pins, it just doesn't work out right. So you need to dump the original quick set pins and use repin it with your O3 kit. Very important, because it can cause problems. I just cut this one on my uh, 1200. This is, it uh, looks like four, three, four, four, two, four, one, two. And we'll check it. It is very smooth. We can go ahead and hit this with a lubricant. I may take this one apart later to find out, but I'm guessing, you know, with, and I hate, even with quick set single step, I hate using those 24 pins because there is such a chance that they could do what has happened here and jam up. We'll spray some lube in here and see if this helps it, but I think I think we've gone sideways with the, with a wafer. Yeah, that one's toast. All right, well, it served its purpose for a long while. So this is one of the, the pre-cuts or the, you know, the setup keys that I cut for my truck. We'll come over here. We can just pretend like it's one that somebody brought in. Or if I want to check, I'm going to go ahead and cut. I'm going to turn this off for just a second so I can lower the volume. Okay, cut four of them. We'll go back over here to our brand newly made key checker. Brush off the keys. And for instance, you know, I'm gonna use these for pre-cuts somewhere one day. And I'll ring them up and then I'll take them and run through the checker. And as long as there is no catchy catchy, we know we are good to go. We know likey catchy catchy. So these all work great. Um, and as expected, and you know, if you grab one, so we'll come over here to our, to our 
newly beginning brass pile. You might remember I did a video on uh, recycling. So all my brass keys are out, but I'm going to grab the. Oh, I actually got quite a few in here. So we take a look at the ones that I have in the bucket. Don't know why they're in the bucket, but let's see. That does not even go in. That is a uh, that is a defective key blank. Okay, this is a minute key. Yeah, it actually works. Oh, it's got a little bit of a catch. A little bit of a catch counterclockwise. This is the same minute key. A little bit of a catch. You can tell usually when keys are bad because the shoulder will be cut down. Those don't look too bad, but this oh, Hillman right here, any of them that use that 66 or whatever, look at that, totally bad. So if somebody brings this key in, we're gonna say this key checker checks keys. We're trying your key and it does not work, therefore we cannot guarantee your key. Here's another one. This is a, uh, obviously it's a Walmart key. Number 66 again, no go. So this is good to have so you can tell people, you know, show them uh, different cuts of keys, an original. This has an X on it, so obviously that is a bad key as well. But you get the idea, let's see what's this over here. Is this one a bad cut? No, nope, that one's smooth, so that's a good cut. But anyway, you can definitely tell that is not the greatest of a key right there because that shoulder is definitely cut down, and you can tell it's been copied a few times. And when we try it in the checker, it does not turn at all. Maybe able to back it out. Oh, yep, back it out a little bit, and it'll work. So that is a good little tool to have to just, you know, explain to people, listen, here's the deal with copies of keys. This is what happens when you have a bad copy. The copy I make you probably will not work, so we cannot guarantee it unless you decode it. And with a quick set tool, a quick cut key deal like this, and recut it to code. However, that sometimes does not always work because somebody may have keyed the lock to that bad key. And then when you go, so they've used off pins, and when you go and you code cut one, back to what you think it should be based on the cuts, it does not work because whoever keyed it up, keyed it up to the bad key. So anyway, that is just my little hint. Um, as with this one, I just took a red Sharpie and colored it. So I'm gonna go find a Sharpie real quick. Stole Kim Sharpie. <laughs> my, yeah, I'm recording. So, you can really do this with anything, but we do it to make it stand out on the counter. Oh, I stole Kim Sharpie and it sucks. But I'm just going to mark it for this video. I'm going to probably, when I get really bored, if I'm sitting up here at the counter, I will color it in the rest of the way. I'll probably go get a better Sharpie to do this because her Sharpie kind of sucks but you know you get the idea you can put anything on there to make it different so that if it's sitting out on your workbench you can grab it easily and you know that it's your key checker so anyway that is it guys i appreciate you guys watching as always if you have any questions or comments leave them in the comment section and i'm going to I'm OCD, so I'm gonna, I've got OCD pretty bad. So I'm going to kind of finish this now, but I'm not going to subject you to it. But anyway, thanks again for watching. Good idea to get you a key checker. It's pretty easy to get across, get these cylinders. I mean, like I said, it's as long as you find one in real decent condition, not wallowed out real bad. Typically, most people don't replace their stuff until it starts getting worn or broken. But every so often, like on a double cylinder deadbolt where they've never used it from the outside and, and it's worn on the inside or broken, you know, like the, the back plug breaks and it has to replace, and they've literally never used the key from the outside, probably you'll need lubrication. But otherwise, the cylinder, the key chamber part is good. 
take it apart, make sure somebody hasn't routed it with a drill bit to make it work. And uh, color it in your favorite color, something that you will see on the workbench, like I'm doing now, as I mentioned. I <laughs> uh, started this, so I kind of got to finish. But anyway, thanks again for watching. Key checker, key checker thinger. It's probably going to be the title of this video. Make you a key checker thinger, thinger bobber. Catch you guys next video. Oh, I'm going to throw this in the giveaway box. One day somebody might get it. Oh, I missed. <laughs>